Heather O'Rourke was only five years old when she spoke one of the movie's most chilling lines. I don't know. I don't know. They're here. That was just part of a busy career that included television, Poltergeist 2, and Poltergeist 3. That was the last film that Heather O'Rourke made. Heather died last February, the result good. of an undetected intestinal blockage. Her mother, Kathleen O'Rourke Peel, is not satisfied with Heather's medical treatment. She has filed a wrongful death suit. She joins us now with her attorney, Sanford Gage. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that strikes me right off is that while there were some flu symptoms and some swelling, everything was treated fairly carefully. And all of a sudden, on February the 1st, what happened? Um, on February 1st, she had been sick um, for a year. And on Super Bowl Sunday, we were watching the football game, and um, she started to throw up. And about every two hours, things would come back up again, so we gave her Gatorade. And, um, Gatorade is what your doctors told you. Yes, yeah. they suggested that because it does have protein in it. It's better than the flat Coke. And um, the next morning, we woke up, and she said she was going to school. I said, you can't go to school because you haven't eaten anything. She said, well, how about some toast? So I made her some toast, and I sat down by her on the couch, and she said she couldn't swallow. Well, at that point, I noticed her fingers were blue and her toes were blue, and she was starting to breathe real heavy. And um, I immediately went to the phone and just called a local clinic nearby. And um, they said, bring her right in. And within a matter of 20, 30 seconds, she went to get dressed, and she fell on the floor. And she was conscious and things, but I think, um, Maybe because her heart was beating, her fingers turned blue. Maybe she wasn't getting enough oxygen. I'm not too sure. And we called the paramedics. And um, when they arrived, she was arguing with them. She said she was fine. She didn't need oxygen. They said, well, yes, you do. And um, they took her outside. And she threw up again and said she was sorry and suffered a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. And she was gone. Um, that's uh, such a sudden thing for any parent. It's. Uh very scary. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been through the whole thing. You're suing because you are not satisfied that what happened, uh, could, that maybe it, could, it, it might not have happened. Right. Um, a year before this, she'd had a parasite, and she was in Kaiser Hospital for several tests. And before they even admitted her, they said she just had the flu, but she was sick for a month. And then they found she had a parasite. And at that point after that, she'd gone back in, and they said she had Crohn's. And so we just accepted it. And then she was on cortisone. Crohn's you know. was how they diagnosed it. Yes, the it was. And uh, she was on cro cortisone all this time. And you'll see in Poltergeist 3, her kind of heavy chipmunk cheeks, which she didn't like how that looked, you know. It swelled her up a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Now, you have your lawyer with you, yes. Sandy Gage. Um, your position is that there was a, a bad diagnosis and the problem could have been... Yes, it could have been avoided. The, the diagnosis was really one of uh, an inflammation of the bowel when in fact what she had was a blockage of the intestine. And on the, the day uh, that she died, apparently these flu-like symptoms made a total blockage take place in the intestine. That starts backing up. You get septicemia, shock, and, and the death occurred rather rapidly thereafter. Uh, on that day, they tried some measures uh, to uh, bring her back and they did a surgery which uh, demonstrated that there had been an erroneous diagnosis that it was a blocked intestine and it's uh, it's pretty clear that that surgery could have been done and should have been done almost a year sooner and if that had occurred that simple procedure would have saved her life. Well we did uh, talk to the Permanente Medical Group uh, part of Kaiser and they released a statement to us which says this is a very tragic case for all concerned it's also extremely a, extremely complex case complicated by a number of factors not given to simple answers we have reviewed the case extensively we are confident that the course of action taken by our doctors was entirely appropriate that's their statement so um, I guess I have to ask both of you at this point you're suing for money damages um, what, what would be the point of, of this lawsuit? Well, why are you doing it? The only reason I'm doing it is because I had so many questions and none of my answers, you know, between the thing that happened and what, and what they told me she had, nothing sounded reasonable and I needed to go get the answers. And I think by going to Mr. Gage, he lifted the burden a little bit more from me and kind of more his responsibility now. 
So you want to know why? What happened here why? and why? And this, uh, just very quickly, the money damages would be the amount of money that Heather might have earned had she lived. Do you have any sense of how much money that is? Well, it's really hard to, to measure. The focus has not been on the uh, economic loss. It's mostly been on the tragedy itself. And uh, collecting enough information, it took us three months to get x-rays and medical records to complete it. Thank you both. It is 12 minutes before the hour. Thank you both for Thank being you. with Mrs. Peel and Sandra Gage.